Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mike and this is 40's Chop Shop. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I used a couple of Mishimoto's universal parts to make a nice compact cooling package for my SR20 and my Datsun 620. You could use these products and ideas for any vehicle though, so stay tuned and check it out. All right, I'm gonna start out by showing the parts that I'm gonna be dealing with today. Got myself a eBay radiator. <laughs> It's uh, aluminum uh, and definitely a better shape than what I was dealing with before. So pretty excited about that. Definitely will provide better cooling than letting all the air just rush underneath it. Um, I have a Mishimoto coolant temperature sensor adapter. I'll show you that when I get it out. And then a couple of hoses and a temperature sensor. I also have a piece of 0 .040 aluminum that I'm gonna make a shroud out of for the fan. And then of course, the Mishimoto 14 inch electric fan. So I'll go into these parts more as I get into them, but I'm gonna start by dismounting up the radiator. So the radiator that I bought on eBay was sold as a Datsun 620 and Nissan Stanza radiator. It generally fit, but only one of the bolt holes lined up. So I'm just mocking up the radiator and then shimming it up to get an idea of where it sits so that I can start mocking up the radiator hoses. Alright, so first we'll have a look at my old setup here. This was what I had going, just a joiner pipe here going from the radiator up to the thermostat housing. Just a regular aluminum joiner. And this is what I got from Mishimoto. It's the inlet water temperature sensor housing. It does exactly what it says. Joins two pipes together and then gives you a 1 8 inch NPT spot there for mounting a water temperature sensor. Um, I used a two switch or a two two prong one, which I'll show you here. This one's from Setrab. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Once the sensor hits the right temperature, it closes the loop and then that trips the relay that will start the electric fan. So. Pretty straightforward. This one is rated for 190 Fahrenheit. So I'll try and join this all up and show you how it looks. All right, I have, I have my uh, Mishimoto water temperature inlet sensor adapter. Um, really pleased with the, the fit and finish of this. Not super pleased that the hose clamps at this end definitely are too small. Um, that's no big deal. I can go get hose clamps. I have T-bolt clamps, but they're friggin' massive. So those aren't gonna work. So I'll go get some new hose clamps and then this part will be done. It goes from there to here and then gives me that two prong adapter to trigger the relay that will turn on this fan. So, moving to that fan. Amazingly, it fits perfectly over here. I feel like just cutting the sheet of aluminum will give me a solid place to mount this to. I, I could just do the um, like zip tie things that go through here, but I'm not a huge fan of those, and that leaves all this un louvered space here so i think it'll be better just to put a piece of aluminum there and kind of guide the air out through the fan as best as possible so uh, worst case scenario i'm out a piece of sheet that didn't cost me too much so i'll go about that and see if it fits up all right got my radiator fan shroud cut out look how floppy this is so obviously that's not going to support the electric fan. I have something cooking inside. 
that I think will help bring some structure back to this. If so, I'm going to be pretty pumped with it. And then also bolting the fan to this should give it some rigidity as well. I'm also going to bend up the edges or fold them under to give me a little bit more space. I haven't quite decided yet. So um, once that is done uh, printing inside, I'm going to try and apply it to this and see if it stiffens it up. If not, we'll go from there. I'm going to move on to um, creating a new place to bolt the radiator to because all of the holes don't line up from the one that I ordered. The shape is right, but the bolt holes aren't in the right place, so I'm just going to weld some steel on there so I can make my own mounts where I want them. So to start the radiator mounts, I first measured each side of the core support where the radiator mounted. These measurements were then transferred to a 1 8 by 1 inch strip of steel. These pieces of steel will be bolted to where the old radiator mounts are and the new radiator will be bolted to these. Alright, well you see how wobbly that is. Here's my first attempt. I got those 3D printed bending clamps in here. I'm gonna give it a few squeezes on the sides here and see if it stiffens up. really hard to tell how it's working it's folding it a little bit getting a little bit of a lip I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go all the way around multiple times um, I probably should have made the surface area a bit smaller so I could get more force on it but it's kind of doing its job so I'm gonna keep going at it and see how things stiffen up once I get a circle all the way around all right time for a quick update this is my old wobbly piece of aluminum. Pretty stiff now, even stiffer when I cut those or, or uh, bend the ends there. My little 3D printed press thing didn't really work too well. I ended up hitting this with a hammer and then just folding the edges a tiny bit with the pliers. But look how much rigidity it gained from that. So I'm about to bolt the fan on here and then we'll see how much difference that makes. pretty darn pleased with that definitely not perfect but got a nice little swoop in here and lots of clearance for the fan blade um, just got to fold the edge a tiny bit again just to give it a little bit more rigidity put some of that foam on the top here and bolt it up finish bolting up my radiator and be done with that all right this is looking pretty good and totally screwed up I measured wrong and I did all this nice bending to make these wings and poke it out and somehow I got it wrong um, so I'm gonna have to cut the edge off here and probably just mount it and use foam all the way around um, the radiator mounts are kind of staggered top to bottom so I'll probably just space them out um, as needed and then get an even depth and then just foam all the way around it. This is plenty sturdy um, with just the fold I did here on the fan. But never end a day on an L, so, or else you'll lose all your motivation. So I ended up mounting the radiator and putting the hood back on and the radiator clears. I could drop it maybe a tiny bit. Um, but it's looking pretty good in there. So I'm gonna mark the mounts and then finish drilling those. 
and call it a day because I'm tired. <laughs> All right, as I said, I kind of screwed up the fan shroud. I w didn't go to plan as I was expecting, but I worked something out and I got it to work. Um, but like I said in my last clip, don't end your night on a failure or a screw up because you're gonna lose all your motivation. So I forged ahead and just went and finished up the brackets for mounting the radiator. So I'll show you that now. All right, so you can see I did the one inch by eighth inch strips there. Um, let's see. So I used button head screws or button head M6 by one bolts that screw into the factory radiator locations except for this bolt this one was the same for the radiator mount and for these um, or I should say like the old radiator holes and these holes lined up on this one so this bolt holds both of these in place and then same kind of thing over here button head screws to hold this strip in place and then I put riv nuts through this strip of metal to hold that so I just have to paint, take these out and paint them um, but I think I'll just go ahead and finish uh, showing you guys how I did the radiator and go from there. So let's get this radiator in. Alright, let's go over the remainder of these items so I can get this installed and be done with this, paint that up, and get back to my front suspension. So this is the lower radiator hose. I just cut two pieces of the old upper radiator hose I was using. And then what I did was I took an eighth inch rod and just bent it to the shape that I thought the upper radiator hose would be. And then I went to my local Napa and they were kind enough to just take this little piece of rod back there and um, fit it up to what he thought was the closest radiator hose they had which in my case was this one here if you think that part number might help you out there you go cut the end off of it and then I'll show how these go in the truck all right I've finished uh, fabricating and building everything and I've gotten all the pieces in there so I can mock it up and show you guys what it looks like so there's a radiator mount with the shroud that I built you can see how I kind of had to um, bend it over and then I have foam in between all of the pieces to get a nice seal around there so air doesn't escape. The lower radiator hose with that Mishimoto piece and then the upper radiator hose a little close to the sensor here so not 100% comfortable on this one yet but uh, I'm gonna run it and see what happens. If I have to do a joiner over here or something in the future I will. All right, last little thing. I believe I did tell you that I would show you how to wire this up. So the way that this works, you have your relay that has an ignition power source to the trigger side of the relay, and then it grounds out through this switch. So the, the feed coming off of the relay goes into here and then to ground, or you can do it the other way around where this feeds out to the relay. And then once this gets to temperature, it will trip the trigger on that relay and then that will send the high power current to the fan. So that's how that works. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you liked seeing those Mishimoto Universal parts be applied to this Datsun 620 project. Stay tuned for more videos. I'm gonna get back to my front suspension and hopefully that will be done soon. So I'll see you then.